Ahoj, jak se máš? Dneska pro tebe mám velmi speciální video. So, I switch to English. In this special video today, I'd like to talk about cases because many of my beginner students ask me constantly about the cases, the case system, um, the Czech cases. And I'd like to show you how I understand the cases, how I see them. So, at first I'll be, talk about, I'll be talking about why we have the cases that it's not just a bunch of crazy Czechs who gathered many years ago and decided let's invent cases so that no foreigner wants to learn the Czech language. <laughs> no, no. So why we have the cases in the Czech language? Then I will compare the Czech cases to English, the Czech language to English and a bit German and French as well. And at the end I will give you many examples and it will be your turn to show, to try if you got it right. So if you're ready, let's go. At first, if you don't know me, I'm Eliška. I'm a language tutor of Czech for Foreigners and I'm founder of Slow Czech Project. So be sure, to, if you don't know Slow Czech yet, to check the slowcheck.com website where you can get more audios, videos and other content related to the Slow Czech. And now let's get to the topic, let's get to the cases. So, what are cases in Czech and what I'll be talking about today? At first, I'd like to show you how English and Czech uh, express who is doing what or what is doing what. Then I will show you that actually there are some cases in English. And I will give you some examples, uh, nice uh, pictures. Um, I will show you the cases and the pictures. And at the end, I have a little practice for you. You can try to recognize, to determine which case it is in the sentence. So let's have a look at those words. We have uh, words like Susanna, Luke, a lot, loves. What can we create as a sentence? We can say Susanna loves Luke a lot. Or Luke loves Susanna a lot, which is uh, a different meaning, different sentence. So, how do we know who is doing what? How do we know who loves who? In English, the word order is important here. To indicate who loves who, English uses the word order. But how about the Czech language? We have the words Zuzana, Lukáš, Moc, Miluje. So, in Czech, we have more options. Let's have a look at them. Zuzana moc miluje Lukáše. Lukáše moc miluje Zuzana. Zuzana miluje Lukáše moc. You see, in the Czech language, the word order is not important at all. So here we see that in Czech, we have three ways how to say the same thing. And the word order change, but not the meaning. So, who loves who? Here, Zuzana is the subject. She loves Lukáš. She loves him. So, Lukáš is the object of the sentence. He is being loved. And notice that we added a little ending E here to the name of Lukáš. But what about if Lukáš loves Zuzana? So the same logic, Lukáš moc miluje Zuzanu. Zuzanu moc miluje Lukáš. Lukáš Zuzanu moc miluje. The logic, as I said, is the same here. We have added the ending U for Zuzana to say that she is being loved by Lukáš. Me meaning that Lukáš here, he's the object. 
And Susanna, or Susanna in Czech, she is the object. She is being loved. So, if we talk about Susanna loving Lukáš or Lukáš loving Susanna, you see that we have so many ways how to say that. And if you're learning Czech, you already know that the word order is pretty flexible, which means that compared to English, we don't use the word order to express who is doing what or who loves who in our example. So, the question is, how does the Czech language explain who is doing what? And the answer is obvious, cases. We call it cases or the case system, and we declinate the words. So, what does it mean? What is this case? In our sentence, there are two roles. Zuzana, she is loving someone, and Luke, he is being loved. In English or French, as I said, to understand who is doing what, we follow the word order. So, the first is here is the subject, the subject, someone loving someone, and the second object will come after the subject. But in Czech, we can switch the word order quite freely, which can be quite frustrating. But we will still know what the speaker is saying. We still know that in our example, Zuzana loves Lukáš, because she is the subject here. And thanks to the grammatical case, we know who is doing what. So the case refers to the function of the noun, meaning who is doing what. Now I like to show you that there actually are cases in English. Let's have a look at it. Zuzana dala darek Lukášovi in English. Susanna gave a gift to Luke. To say that Susanna is giving the gift, she is doing some action, and Luke is not doing the action. But he is being given the gift, he is receiving the action. So in English, you use the preposition to, to say that she is giving a gift to Luke. So in English, you use the word order and preposition to understand who is doing what, who is doing the action, and who is receiving the action. In Czech, all we need is to add ovi to Lukáš, and we know that he is receiving the gift. Another example. To je maminčino auto. This is mom's car. In English, the preposition, or this uh, S, uh, shows the possession. So we know that mom is the owner of the car. Now, I would like to speak about the cases in Czech. As you know, there are only seven cases in Czech. I say only compared, for example, to Estonian, which has 14 cases. There are, as you know, four cases in German, six in Latin, seven in Polish, six in Russian, eight in Sanskrit. But Finnish has, according to some people, 15, and according to others, up to 30 cases. Hungarian has 18 cases. And I have seen the Tsang language, a Northeast Caucasian language, um, that has 64 cases. <laughs> so now, seven cases in Czech seems pretty easy, right? So, what do you think? Let's have a closer look at them. One by one. The first case, the nominative, as we call it, we have a sentence Stonoška pije kávu. So the nominative or the basic form case, as I say, as I call it, there is no ending change, and the meaning is that the subject is doing the action. Accusative, or fourth case for Czech people, if you're asking them about the cases, means the direct object of the sentence. Krokodil má rád zmrzlinu. Here, zmrzlina is uh, an accusative case. Zmrzlina changed the ending, meaning it's an object. 
So zmrzlina is receiving the action of being liked by the crocodile. So zmrzlina is an object in the sentence. Genitive case or the second case is often showing the possession. So we have a case, we have a sentence to je krokodilova zmrzlina. So this ova ending uh, is saying this is crocodile's ice cream. Or the same example that you know already. So this is mom's car in Czech. To je maminčino auto. So this ino uh, ending is saying that this is mom's car. We, we know that the mom, mom is owning something. This genitive case uh, is showing the position. Or genitive case can show that we are moving towards or in some place, in direction of some place. So stonoška de do kavárny. So do kavárny, we know that she is going inside or to towards the coffee shop. We can even switch the word order and say do kavárny de stonoška. Or stonoška do kavárny de. It's up to you. You can play with uh, the words. The locative or the sixth case. Stonoška čeká na zastávce na šalinu. So locative shows the location or something is taking place uh, somewhere. In English, we would use it, a or on uh, as a preposition and no case inflection. This means that no endings are added, no endings are changed. Whereas in Czech, we change zastávka to zastávce. And we know that it's the location, no matter the word order. The third case are the dative. Dative means that the noun, the word, is receiving something, is receiving some action, for example, of calling. So, volala sem stonošce. I called a centipede. And I can say stonošce sem volala. It will still be me who is calling the centipede. Thanks to the ending, I know that. In French, uh, it's called indirect object or le COI, le complément d'objet indirect. And you can see very clearly a preposition A here. Whereas in Czech, we don't need any preposition at all. Or the same logic, but a bit more typical example. Dala sem dárek stonošce. Or stonošce sem dala dárek. Dárek sem dala stonošce. And still, I gave a gift to a centipede. The instrumental or the seventh case. We are using a tool or a mean or uh, some instrument. Stonoška jede autobusem. Now we're using a mean of transport. So autobusem, this um, em or m ending means by bus. So it's like saying that she is going bus by. <laughs> uh, in English, use by, but in Czech we have no need to add by uh, to say that she is going by bus. Or another example, stonoška píše perem. So this m meaning that she is writing with a pen, but the same. We don't need uh, the with preposition. We know that she is using the instrument thanks to the ending. And by the way, uh, this is the reason why this case is called instrumental case, but it's pretty obvious. <laughs> and the last one, the vocative case, meaning um, can be very strange, but when I'm addressing to someone, I'm talking to someone, I'm calling or writing, to someone, I change the ending of his name. Uh, I change, some people think we are changing uh, your names. <laughs> and that's, by the way, the reason why Czech people constantly modify your name. It's just another case. It's not uh, modifying your name completely. It's just the vocative case. So, for example, if you are talking to me, Eliško, jak se máš? Or you're writing to Stonoška. To the centipede, so you would say, Ahoj, Stonoško, kde si? Uh, so if you are talking to someone or writing on Messenger, uh, the same, you will use the vocative case. 
Okay, so I hope that you understand a bit now why we have the cases and you got the logic approximately of those seven cases. And now, if you want, it's your turn. You can identify um, the cases. You can have a look at those sentences, uh, stop or pause the video and try to get, uh, try to say which case it is. So, for example, the first one, Stonoška telefonuje Kocourovi. Which case, in which case is this Kocourovi word? Is it a dative? Is it a locative? Is it a nominative? What do you think? So, pause the video and then see you in five minutes. Okay, so, was it hard? <laughs> Let's have a look. Stonoška telefonuje Kocourovi. Kosourovi, you have this obi ending for masculine, meaning to whom. To whom is she calling? So the kotsour is receiving the action of calling. It's the dative case. Eliška učí češtinu pro cizince. Eliška, basic nominative case, I or she, is doing the action of teaching. She's the teacher and uh, the other people are receiving her action of teaching. So the nominative, the basic form case. Krokodil každý den kupuje jahody. So now you see that someone, not jahody, but the crocodile is doing the action and he is buying some object. So he is buying what? Jahody. So jahody are the direct object or accusative case because they are being bought by a crocodile. Krokodil kupuje jahody v obchodě. So where? Where is the action of buying the jahody, buying the strawberries? Um, being, where is the, the action taking place? V obchodě. Inside, in the supermarket, in the market. So where? This is the location. It's locative case. And of course, the v preposition will help you. Na Vánoce telefonuje kočka z tonožce. So, stonožce is not stonožka, it's not the basic case, but stonožka is receiving the action of the phone call. Who is doing the phone call? Kočka. So, kočka is calling mm, during the Christmas time to a centipede, to a dative case. Na Vánoce dává kočka dárek stonožce. So, here the same. Who is doing the action? To whom? Stonoška is receiving the action from kočka. So kočka is doing the action of giving a gift. Nominative case. A Eliška nejede domu autem. So we have seen it together. Autem, M, by, car, by a mean of transport, the instrumental case. And the last one. Eliška nejede do práce autem. So do práce. Um, Eliška or me, I'm doing the action of going by car to some place. So I'm going towards to a place called Práce, to where I'm moving, moving there because I have to. Um, this is the genitive case. So um, how did it go? Did you enjoy it? Did you understand it? Uh, at least 80%? So, <laughs> You see, uh, the Czech language is pretty easy, right? That's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you are at least starting a little bit to understand the Czech cases and the Czech case system. If you are learning Czech and uh, you don't know the Slow Czech project yet, so be sure to check the Slow Czech website, slowcheck.com, where you can find, for example, the audios that I'm creating in a podcast version. So you can listen to them on Spotify or in any of your other podcast apps. You will find them beginner, intermediate and advanced levels. And you will find there all the other materials that I'm creating in a slow Czech language. So, um, have a great day. Měj se hezky, uč se česky, subscribe. A uvidíme se příště tady na YouTube, nebo uslyšíme se na Spotify. Tak čau.
Ahoj.